there, it's Courtney with RCK Living, and I am a full-time homemaker. Here, I document the projects and routines that I get myself into to hopefully give you ideas along the way. Now, we just got back a whole hog that we raised on our farm, so I'm gonna go through everything that we have as far as the meat goes, and then I'm gonna show you how we set up a deep freeze for that. Now, I don't know about you, but as far as chest deep freezers go, I completely despise them. You end up with stuff on the bottom that never gets touched, and then you're only working on the stuff on the top, and then you forget about what's on the bottom. It ends up being a disaster. With that being said, we bought a chest freezer. <laughs> so the reason being is that we, when we went to butcher the pig, it kind of snuck, snuck up on us and we were able to save a whole lot of money for buying a larger stand-up freezer, uh, which would have been ideal, obviously, but we are working with what we have. We bought a seven cubic foot gallons brand. It's G-A-L-A-N-Z, chest freezer. We got it from Target. And the one stipulation that I had for Ray was that if we were to buy this chest freezer, we had to figure out a good organization system so we don't have stuff getting lost on the bottom. So I'm gonna show you what we have planned and hopefully the hog fits in there. All right, so this is the chest freezer. This is the inside of the freezer. I'm gonna talk about dimensions because that is an important part of how we organized this. So from this wall, up to this ledge where the compressor is. Running across is 19 inches. The dimension from this wall to this wall is 16 inches. And then the height from the floor up to this ledge is eight inches tall. Now we want to know the overall width of the freezer. From this wall over to this wall is 27 and a half inches. And then once we add in a basket, we need to know the height from right here to right here is 12 inches. Now that we know the dimensions of the inside of the freezer, I can tell you what we're gonna do with them. So what we're doing is we have two pieces of plexiglass. This is cut 19 inches long, eight inches tall, and then we have a notch cut in the middle about halfway through. And then we have this piece of plexiglass. And that one is the 16 inches wide, eight inches tall with another notch cut halfway through. All right, so what we're doing with these pieces of plexiglass, um, at the two notches, we're going to put these together and they're gonna interlock with each other. So this is gonna be our bottom sorting mechanism. It's going to sit in the bottom of the freezer and we're gonna have four compartments and this is gonna sit flush with that ledge that we have on the bottom. So let's go ahead and put this in and then I'll show you the next part. We're gonna go ahead and put the interlocked pieces in. You wanna be kinda of gentle with the plexiglass. You don't wanna um, bump it around too much. It doesn't really have to be perfect for us. No one's gonna see it, it just has to be functional and hold the compartments. So, we have four compartments down there. It's sitting level with this section. Now I'll show you what's next. The next level we have is going to be our basket level. I found these milk crate type baskets at Target. I think they're like $16 each. And these ones, the dimensions of this is 15 and 5 eighths by 13 and three quarters and a little over 10 and a half inches tall. So this fit the parameters perfect for me to have two of these sitting side by side. I didn't have to do any trimming or modifications to it and I still have a little bit of room um, to where the baskets are hitting on it. So let's put these in. So these baskets literally sit right in there. And now you have your second level to hold your food. And the last thing we do is put in the baskets that came with the freezer. Now I do have another gap right here that um, I'm kind of looking for another basket that 
is shorter than these ones but about the same width uh, but until then I'll just kind of stack it up with like items in from this basket so that's what we've got I do have high hopes for this organization system so then I can not worry about losing meat you know coming to the bottom and having random pieces that um, who knows how old they are well I do know how old they are because the labels are dated but other times where my family's bought bulk meat in the past you end up at the bottom of the freezer and you have six seven year old meat because you were never able to get to it so I have high hopes for this and so we're super excited for it the little things you get excited about now we're gonna go inside I'm gonna show you what we got from our pork and then I'll meet you back here and we will put everything back in and see if it all fits here behind me I have 206 pounds of meat that we're going to put in our freezer and then some more that I'll talk about in here in a little bit but I'm going to flip you around show you what all we've got going on and how we plan on using it so this pig was a pig that we raised on our own um, we bought it from a local breeder her hanging carcass weight was 206 pounds so she was about 250 pounds live weight so we purchased her and three others in August of 2021 and we were able to get them into the butcher February 3rd of 2022. So I'm going to start on this edge and work my way down and then I'll have to reload the table with other things and show you what else we've got. So up in this top corner we have all of our ham steaks. These were all cured by the butcher, and there are nine of them there. And then we have uh, four cured roasts. Two of them are the front shoulder roasts, and then two of them are the ham roasts. And then, of course, we have the ham hocks. And then next we have our pork chops. We had them cut at three quarters of an inch and two per pack. And we have 25 packages of these pork chops. Uh, these pork chops will definitely at least last one meal for us. If not having, we'll definitely have leftovers with some of these um, pork chops that were in the middle of the loin area. So those will be great for dinners. We have two packages of the spare ribs. We have six roasts. So we aren't big roast people. We might hold a little bit back to cook as roasts, but our main intention for the roasts is to grind up for sausage. But with, um, with this round of butchering, since we still have deer meat in the freezer, we like to grind Italian and breakfast sausage for ourselves with the deer. But we, when we were making our cut sheet, we didn't know how much of which one we would want. So we just told the butcher to leave all the roasts as roasts and then anything that was made as sausage that would have been cut up as sausage, you know, just extra trimmings and things, those are going to be part of that grinding as well. So that's the main plan with those roasts. We might do something like pulled pork here in the summer, but other than that, we're planning on grinding it for sausage. We just need to kind of decide once we get through this deer meat what we want to do for the pork meat so then we're using it to the best of our abilities. And here after the sausage we have all of our bacon packages. We had 13 pounds of bacon that was cured. As far as the bacon goes, each pound of bacon is going to get us through about three meals of breakfast. When I cook bacon, if I'm just making a standard breakfast, I will count the slices and that's how we feed the family. So. Each breakfast we go through about five slices of bacon, two for my husband, two for myself, and then one for our daughter. I know that seems a little anal, but I think it's a waste to cook a full pound of bacon if we're only going to eat five slices of it. That's what we do with the bacon, and it definitely stretches it a lot farther. So instead of having 13 meals, we'll have 39 meals of bacon breakfast. And then of course I do some dinner cooking, which I might do half a pounder depending on what I'm cooking, the full pound of bacon. That is just dependent on what I decide to do with it. So that's our plan with the bacon. So I just got everything cleared back off. That was 
most of the pork that we got back, but we still have some left. But what I did just show you was our main eating source. The next part that we have is that stew meat I was talking about. I asked the butcher to keep all of the fat from the pigs that we sent in, as well as the organ meat. So I'm gonna flip you around and show you what we got. And this is the last of the pigs. So this side is all that stew meat I was talking about. Each of these packages are one pound packages. There are 17 packages of the stew meat. Like I said, this is gonna end up being ground up. We just didn't know what exactly we wanted to um, use it for as far as the type of sausage. So that's why we asked them to just leave it as is. They sent us uh, two packages of soup bones. I'll make some sort of bone stock out of this. And then all of this is the pork fat. Now this pork fat is from three pigs total, from the one that we sent in and then or some members of our family purchased the other two pigs and they didn't want any of the lard so uh, we asked the butcher to keep that as well for us. So all of this lard is from three different pigs and then these two, I think this one is also the leaf lard, but this is the kidney fat lard and I am confident that that's what that one is as well. All of the lard that we kept will be used for, uh, most of it's going to be used for rendering down into lard. Um, at this point it's just pig fat, it's not lard. Lard is the rendered version of the pork fat. So most of it's going to be rendered, but we need to calculate in how much we're going to be using. Fingers crossed with our deer harvest this year, I don't want to render all of the lard and then not have any fat to cut into the deer meat for our deer grind this next year. So we need to kind of calculate what we used last year and then just hold that back for our hopeful deer harvest this year. But the kidney fat lard is also known as leaf lard. That's the purest lard on the animal, so I'm definitely gonna render that down. But yep, we just have to figure out how much we need to hold back for the deer harvest and then I'll render the rest. And then this bag of goodness is all of the organ meat from all three of those pigs. I think I haven't obviously looked, it's just a big bag of frozen organs at this point. There's definitely liver and heart in there. I'm not sure exactly what else there is, but. So with the organ meat, it is really good for you to eat, but we are not big organ meat eaters. I've never tried it. We have had deer at heart in the past. It wasn't the worst thing we've had, but it wasn't our favorite meal either. So we might try pig heart, I don't know. But if not, my original plan was to cut it up and dehydrate it into dog treats. So that was the main plan for that. I just didn't want it to go to waste because if we didn't keep it back, it was just gonna get tossed. So that's what the plan was for that. All right, we are going to put all the meat in the freezer and fingers crossed it fits. So what I think I'm gonna start with is that stew meat and the roast that we're probably not gonna touch for a little while, at least until we get that deer meat closer to being finished up. So I think that's what I'm gonna put in that bottom layer of compartments.
This is what we ended up with as far as the organization goes. I think once I get rid of all of that organ meat and then once I render down that lard, it'll be a lot more manageable in here. But I am able to easily move these. These are both full of bacon. And then I've got over here, um, I've got the two hams, a little bit of lard, the spare ribs. And then two more uh, cured roasts. So those are going to be put into our other freezer that we have. Not a whole lot of room, but I'll work on taking stuff out of that freezer, putting it in my inside freezer that's attached to my regular refrigerator. And then we'll just kind of work from there. But so far, I mean, it's not the most efficient use of the space, but it'll definitely save not having to worry about freezer burnt meat in the bottom of the freezer. It makes it a little bit easier to dig to the bottom. And I'm definitely happier with the time and money efficiency over the space efficiency. I'm gonna get this finished up and then I'll come back with my final thoughts. All right. I was able to get everything into both of the deep freezers except for the stag of fat that I'm just gonna go ahead and render down into the lard this afternoon. So we'll get that taken care of. And then, like I said, we have that stew meat that we'll have to grind up. Keep an eye out for that video when we get around to it. I don't know if it's gonna be anytime soon because we have to get through our deer meat and kinda decide what we're doing with it. But um, we will videotape the process of how we grind and you know seasoning and everything like that. I did wanna wrap up with saying that we are super blessed to be able to provide for ourselves in this way. Being able, It's really exciting to be able to raise an animal from probably about six to eight weeks old when we bought them, about 35 pounds, and raising them up to butcher weight. Uh, being able to choose the different cuts of meat that we want, working with butchers in the local area, supporting their businesses, being able to raise our daughter in a situation where she's able to experience this. Uh, she understands the fact that these pigs, the meat that we brought home was on our farm. We raised them, we fed them, we loved them. It's always difficult to let the animals go at the end of the year, but it always, it's also exciting that we're able to live in an area and place where we are able to raise our own animals. Our goal is to raise our daughter in a situation where she understands where everything comes from, uh, where our resources come from, and that's one of our big goals with our life is to raise her in that way. And then of course being uh, self-sustainable and not having to rely on a grocery store. So I know that was a mouthful, but I just wanted to encourage you to you know, try and raise your animals. And if you aren't able to, then consider buying your meat in bulk from either a local meat packer or a local farmer or rancher. That way you're supporting your local economy, you're getting high quality meat in the process, and you have a large amount of meat in your freezers. So I know that was a tangent of itself, but thanks for watching if you're still sticking around. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to see what we've got going on next. Like if you enjoyed what you saw, comment if you have any questions about raising pork, buying pork in bulk, or buying meat in bulk in, in general. If you want to see the other side of things, we have the channel RCK Livestock where we are more in depth on the outdoor things like our raising our livestock, preparing our homestead. But yeah, we'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.